All right, guys, welcome to another episode of KCAPC. We are here with Oki, part two. If you missed part one, go ahead and click this link, link down here or up here or somewhere. It's around here somewhere. Um, we are doing part two like a Bravo special, guys. So <laughs> so we are back right. here with uh, with the, the one, the godfather, the amazingness. We've been having a great conversation kind of about your past and, and, and what you've what you've done. And so now I kind of want to get into one of your passions uh, is rope. Um, how yes. did you get into, and I'm sure you've asked, answered this question a million times, but like, how did you get into rope? So uh, 1996, I was, I, I grew up in Los Angeles. So uh, I was in, walking down the street on my favorite like little strip in a place called uh, Los Feliz. And there was this adult bookstore and they had this pink magazine with this guy tied down in the most beautiful way. And I said, gosh, I want to do that. And not only was that my first experience with looking at rope in such a way, but that was also one of the earlier kink experiences that I had. And that actually made me commit to finding the rope. Well, not just the rope community, but the kink community. So it was it was because of a magazine. And I don't <laughs> I never really knew. I just thought it was hot. I didn't care if somebody was tied up. They were tied up and it was hot. My dick got hard. Well, you it. know, and you were like, that's that is that on that. It's and you've done you've done a lot in that community. Um, you know, Google it. It's fine. It's all there. Uh, we don't have to, to rehash all of that. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you about rope in general. What are some things that you ha have had to unlearn about rope? Ooh, good question. Never been asked that before. Unlearn. So I think one of the first things that I unlearned was that it's it's about people it's not about the time you're 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 trying to be with somebody and you're trying to make a connection and when i learned that i think i started to get half a clue about what rope is about for me yeah it's and that's that's one of those things that like like i'm interested in rope in the sense of like I like the idea of being bound. I like the idea of being kind of, you know, restrained, but I'm also like, I'm a bigger, I'm a bigger dude. I'm not, you know, when you look at rope, especially when you see rope in like the media, it's always, mm -hmm. you know, skinny, you know, skinny girls or like slender dudes and, or like muscular. And I'm like, I don't fit that aesthetic. So, you know, rope isn't, although I'm interested in it, I, I for a long time I was like, rope isn't for me because I don't fit that body type. But now I think as we are getting, you know, the body, body positivity movement is coming on, you're starting to see different body types in rope. And, and as someone who's kind of one of the, the I hate to say old heads, um, but one of the 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 people who are experienced, you know, what are your thoughts on people with bigger frames or bigger bodies in rope? Like, yeah, I'm challenging you now. <laughs> I'm old, it, uh, dude. I'm old. <laughs> Thank you for being so nice, but yeah, I am. I'm fucking old. Okay, so I like the movement that's been going around. It's been saying a lot of the things that a lot of us a lot of us has been saying for years as a public service announcement. So I think that you would have loved this website called barebound.com. And it was just like it sounds. It was for people who like to see bears and 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 bigger men tied up and you know 
it was hot it was sexy and i'm not sure if it's around anymore but that idea was around i would say 15 years ago and that was something that that did bring things to the forefront also as far as body positivity is concerned with respect to the glbtq plus community uh there's also the bear community and that was also something that you could take a look at as far as various body shapes with respect to to bigger men who are hot and sexy um i don't know the few the current the few international and i'm going on a tangent here i'm sorry international bears that i've seen were more muscle bears and i i like to see bears hairy bear bellies and all <laughs> you, that stuff. you ain't like you miss no meals or nothing i ain't miss no meals i don't that's I, right i catch every meal every single one of them <laughs> i <laughs> that's good i think that you would look hot and rope i also think that you could do all of the things you just my key thing is what people need to understand is you need to make sure that you connect with the person to understand what they are able to do so you can bring out the best in them. My whole mantra is you want to make them, you, you want to create beautiful things, make people feel beautiful. And beauty is very subjective. It could be beauty as pain, beauty as whatever you, you want it to be, what two people are creating together. Uh, and that's my personal approach when I tie to them. I don't care who they are, what they look like or whatever. Uh, if we're going to do something together, then I want to make sure that we, we do something that's pretty amazing and we have that particular connection. Absolutely. Now, back to your question. So now that I can answer it, and you know where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. So... The one thing that I think that's missing now still is when you're creating people who are rope educators, there's the ones who are very thoughtful about creating lessons. And those are the ones who are creating rope lessons with people, with diverse people in mind from the ground up. And then there are individuals who look at diversity and at this point, since we're talking about body positivity, specifically people of size, they're they're just going to have an add-on. Oh, by the way, here's the tie. And let's go on and bring in a person who is bigger to show you that they can be in this rope. So the complicated thing about rope is that you want to tie the individual and as opposed to just making a tie and then trying to put it on somebody. And I think that's what we should be focused on with respect to this movement is concerned. You need to just go on and take a look and focus on the individual, making sure you're constructing or creating something together. And so that you have this mutual outcome where people are going to be satisfied. The rub is you're not going to be, it's not like being flogged where you're able to create impact sensation and then you can automatically adjust it. The trick is with rope is since you're dealing with compression, you're, you're dealing with gravity and you have all of these external factors that you're trying to mitigate then you have to look at the individual who's in your ropes. When you're tying somebody who weighs like a buck and, and is skinny as fuck, then a lot of times it's not going to be as difficult to bring somebody up. And when you look at somebody who may have, let's say, limited mobility they actually, and I'm stealing this from a friend of mine by the name of Midori, they actually already have a concept of bondage due to that limited mobility, which is which could be based on disability or it could be based on, let's say, size 
and you you aren't as flexible. Not saying that all people of size are not flexible because there are some. There are some. Listen, I'm, side. I'm, oh, oof. good God, yes. <laughs> and you, <laughs> and that, you, but you you want to take all of those factors into consideration. So you you create something that takes some troubleshooting, and it's a it's a where you have mutual communication. And so you're, you're just talking to people constantly until you get what you want to achieve. And then you go on and, and, and do the stuff that you would like to do in order to have that outcome that is going to be mutually beneficial and minimize injury. Well, I think one of the things when we talked about in our pre-interview was this idea that like people who, there were people who do rope and then, you know, understood that they may have had a long time row partner and mm -hmm. you know bodies change and they oh don't God. change with the body type they just find somebody mm -hmm. else that fits that body type and continue doing yeah. rope and, and how damaging uh, that can be yeah nawashi kana like he's pretty much like oh my god my rope idol right now uh he brings that up quite a bit where he says or he 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 actually creates rope for the same partner currently his partner has had an injury and so that means that he's constructed rope in order for her to be able to be in rope usually if something happens you go oh dear uh, something's going on. Let's just go on and find the next person. Now, I'm going to make an exception. If somebody's severely injured and and can't be in rope at all, then they shouldn't be. However, we're talking about people who have minor injuries, or let's go on and use your example, people who, who, who change. People get older. People, you know, may gain some weight. But does that mean that they should be replaced? No. And I think that's the kind of attitudes that we see in a lot of places because people want to see, or people believe that the, peop uh, the people want to see skinny rope people and or skinny models in rope. And that's unrealistic because we don't all look like, like that. We don't have mm -mm. those six packs. We don't have that athletic body, but we all want to do participate in stuff. And right. I really like the idea of being able to tie the person and regard, I don't want to say regardless of, of, of their condition, I should say tie the person as time goes on and as things change physically or if other changes occur, occur, being able to adapt and continue, I think that also gives an opportunity to strengthen a relationship. That, that's one of the byproducts of that outlook to, to road bondage. Well, I think I'm a firm believer in no matter what your kink is, it requires a level of trust. And I think that the rope is one of those ones that requires to me an immense amount of trust because you are allowing someone to tie you up. They are, they are making you immobile and you know, you, that is something that inherently if you don't trust the person that is doing that, you know, you're not going to get the same enjoyment or experience than if it's someone that you've got a longstanding relationship with, you know who they are. And I don't necessarily mean like dating relationship, just a, you know, Dying, yeah. a relationship with you, you, you have camaraderie, you, you, you know, this person has your best interests at heart. Like I would never do pick up play rope just because I don't know you. Um, and you know, not to, not to bash anyone who does, but if you, if you, if, if, cause if that's what you want to do, that's fine. That's great. But to me, I just feel like there, there, there's a lot more 
and inv- it's more of a mental thing to me rope to rope is one of the more intense things that you can do with somebody and deceptively innocuous looking it looks so pretty but so the type there's two things uh there's a the concept of deficit thinking that you see a lot in diversity equity and inclusion and then there's also the concept of seminala, which is torture rope. So a lot of people are interested in Japanese rope bondage. Some of the first things that they want to learn is how to suspend or how to tie somebody's arms behind their back or how to tie them in this position and with all of these fancy knots and patterns and stuff. But there is there's some people who seem to be so enamored, or I, I should say a pitfall is to be so enamored with that, that you you fail to take into consideration what you're doing to an individual. And not only that, if you don't understand the concept of Japanese rope bondage, you don't understand the concept of seminal or torture rope. It was built to torture people and you you had to make adjustments so that you couldn't maim and kill somebody and, you know, you still could maim and kill somebody if you do it wrong. Right. Therein lies the trust that you talk about because if you're not skilled and if you haven't practiced and you don't uh, under somebody who's experienced, then these things could happen. And so when you take a look at this torture rope, the things that you're getting straight out of the mouth that people want to do are torture. When you suspend somebody, that shit hurts. You're tying somebody's arms behind their back. And if you push down on your leg too much, then you're going to constrict your breathing. If you push down on your arms too much, if it's tied behind your back, then you're going to constrict your breathing or you can dislocate something or you're going to constrict some blood vessels and you're going to get numb or you can compress nerves. You do it for a long period of time then it compounds and that's going to hurt. And if you don't understand all of those things, and if you don't understand the person that you're playing with, then it's going to happen. So here's the rub. In the past 10 years, so much information that's, it's been coming out. A friend of mine by the name of Zetsu said that the amount of information has surpassed the amount of, of, let's say, dispositions or attitude towards safe, safe rope practices. And that means you have a lot of people who understand how to do this stuff, but you don't know how it impacts the person's well-being. So there's that problem. Hmm. The other hmm. thing is when you look at deficit thinking, as far as DEI is concerned, and it's you automatically have this negative perception of somebody, especially if they're bigger or if if there's some type of lim- physical limitation. But then because of that, you also are going to have negative expectations and you're probably going to project that negativity onto somebody. And so you're going to pretty much have this whole thing come to fruition. So put those two things together where you have your approach to rope, depending on you have somebody different, if they don't look like they're, if they don't, if they're not like a hundred pounds and they're not fit. And then you have this information where you have a lot of people who want to do all of these things, don't understand what's going on. You put those two things together and yeah, you, you have some things that are pretty that's not going to be fun. It's, it's a recipe for disaster, actually. <laughs> it's, it's, that sounds, yeah. it's a, it's, so, um, what are some of the things that you, 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 you used when you got started? You know, if someone is like, Hey, give me a primer on the three things I should read, um, to get started on rope and to learn the basics, you know, if I'm not getting into specific, you know, genres mm-hmm. or types of rope, I just want to learn the basics. Give me the Boy Scout handbook. I would use uh, Midori's book, which is uh, 
Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> her, that book came out in 2001, and I believe she should bring out a second edition. It's called, um, let's see, it's called uh, Seductive Art of Japanese Bondage, and it came out in 2001. The other, I think the pay site that I would actually recommend is, is Shibari Instruction. Um, and what I can do is I can send you the link in a chat so that you can it's uh, so that you can share that okay um shibari it's actually called shibari shibari study.com and i can send you that in a chat so you can give that to people absolutely the that link will be right thing, here it will be right here underneath us uh i think that would those those are fairly good things i would just use these as references i wouldn't use it to uh to i wouldn't use it for people who are looking to do advanced highs i would look at it as a reference to get started on i still believe that people should find qualified instructors i believe kansas city has quite a few of them um and they they should seek out a class and do that because then you have somebody who can look over your work and let you know if something's reliable. Um, but this is actually going to bring us come kind of to one of my to my last question, uh, and that is who are so who are some people that uh, in your in your life that you have looked up to as mentors and some, and then also conversely who are some people who are, are relatively new in the game that you think are doing some really dope things and um, are really, really excited about the stuff that they're doing, be it kink or Ro you know, Ed Roper or, or any of it? Oh, it doesn't matter what? Doesn't okay, matter what. so it doesn't matter if it's kink, leather, or rope? Nope, doesn't matter. Okay, goodness gracious. Ah. Uh... So the people who I've looked up to are Mark Frazier. Uh, as a matter of fact, he's, he's the person who I call mentor. If I have a problem, if I don't know anything, I always go to him. For, and then Vi Johnson for, for history things. Another mentor for Rope, he just passed away his name was numinous and he actually hooked me on to a lot of good information early. Uh, I currently, for rope, look up to Nawashi Kana and I also like a lot of, and o Osada Steve and Yukimura Haruki. Uh, I had the opportunity to study with Osada Steve for quite some time. And I got a chance to uh, take a few classes with Yukimura Haruki. And I am enjoying the opportunity to speak with and learn things from Nawashi Kana recently. And so that's rope. And that would be not only nationally, but internationally people who are local who are doing some cool shit. Um, Paneksha Verks um, doing some cool shit. Um, he's the current leader of Kenbaku, Kansas City, Missouri. Um, another person who is doing some cool shit is um, some cool leather shit. Two people I can think of. Uh, Mark Athens is doing some cool leather shit, and then uh, Master Seiko is doing some cool leather shit. And let's see. Excuse me while I write Another these names down for my uh, for season two. <laughs> okay. Well, you will want 
Master Seiko because he is, he has his own leather house. He could talk about leather houses, but he's also part of the Leather Houses of Color Coalition. And dude's just, he's just fucking smart. Oh my God. Uh, I'm, I'm in awe of, of Master Seiko. Uh, let's see. One more rope person who's really new. Uh, I His name is Naughty Nanners. He's doing some stuff that's kind of outside of the box. He's his own person and he's creating stuff. I don't think he really knows that he's like onto something pretty cool, but every time I see him do something, it's pretty innovative. Yeah, his self tied Tuesdays I, have been pretty fucking dope. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he's pretty cool. Uh, doing some stuff. A uh, solid new teacher up and coming is Andrew Gray. Yeah. If he'd stop being so busy. Um, <laughs> and also Lady O. Uh, I know she's been busy recently, but the concepts and the ideas she comes on with, especially with diverse humans, is is pretty on point. Those are the people who I'm looking forward to see. And there's a guy also, he's doing some good rope making is he just moved out to Austin and he's doing some cool stuff. And, um, oh, goodness gracious. See what happens when you get old. Um, <laughs> nah. But, but you he's a spring chicken, he's, what are you talking about? <laughs> whatever. He, he's doing some cool stuff. Those are some of the people off the top of my head that that i see and who i've been looking up to well okay i want to thank you so much for for your time i know you're a busy man uh and i on behalf of of the audience we appreciate you hopefully it wasn't you know you you got some new things you got some questions you didn't necessarily get before and we're able to dive a little bit deeper into who you are as a person um for all of you guys, if the, anyone wants to get in touch with you or, or learn more about you, where can they find you? They can find me on FetLife, Instagram, and Facebook. Okay. So um, as Oki, O-K-I-E-N-A-W-A on FetLife, Instagram, you can find my information on my FetLife page. Uh, for both Instagram and Facebook, you'll find the link at the bottom of my profile. Yeah, because you're not going to be able to search those. <laughs> yeah. You're not yeah, gonna I, be able to yeah those. I, I did that intentionally. <laughs> I, I, I figured that much. I was like, you're not going to be able to just search that. Um, thank you so much for everybody listening. Don't forget to like uh, and comment and subscribe uh, to the channel. And we are in the middle of doing a fundraiser. You can check that out on my Facebook. You'll see the uh, the link for that down below, as well as the uh, other links that we have talked about here on the show today. Thank you guys for coming out and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. <laughs>